Grace and peace, everybody. Um, welcome to Berean TV. Hopefully this thing is going to work out the way I planned for it to, um, to work out. I want to, I got a couple of slides, classes getting ready to start back in a couple of weeks. I guess y'all done heard on, or some of y'all done heard that I'm not really part of that apologetics, no apologetics community per se. And I'm going to attempt to explain some of that. I want to talk about the um, classes that's coming up and, and just, and just what's going on in general, as far as, you know, Berean TV and, and, and the direction in which this channel is going to be going. We could say certain things like y'all know I'm Pentecostal. So I'll say like the Lord has released me to teach more things. We'll make statements like that. I'm going to also start showing later on how a lot of pe a lot of the emails and stuff that come in. Somebody show me they can, and they said they're going to show me how to mark out the people name and stuff and just read it because I think the, um, I think for the most part, the church is, the church is slipping. The church don't know that there's people out here that's on a whole nother level. We're going to do a teaching called the occult origins of the Bible. And that's because of certain questions that have come in that's constantly coming in. And, you know, some of it's centered around Kemet, some of it's centered around conspiracy, Europeans, and a lot of things that's been taught, a lot of things that's out there. There's a whole bunch of teachings that's bombarding our young people. Some people, traditionally, they've been in the church and they locked in the church and, you know, it's no problem. But there's other people that's in between. We got a lot of pastors, kids, people that grew up in church. And they said, no, it's a, it's a deeper meaning to the text. Um, I got about 200 and something slides, and I think we're going to start in two more weeks. But I'm going to share a couple of the slides that I pulled out to just do this video, and I'm testing this out. We're going to do lives, and I'm going to do some interview interviews with a couple of different people. And I just want people to know that it's not, it's not a game. Scripture says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. The occult symbols are everywhere that we look. A lot of people, like I said, they think it's, they think it's easy. Recently, I had a, um, you know, I was back and forth with some people and it's all surrounding the Christmas tree. And, and you know how I feel about that because of, I, I feel bad about the tree because on so many different levels. One of the things is I don't like the tree. I don't like a European image of Jesus, Easter eggs, because they're not part of the original church. And a lot of brothers, when they first start coming into spirituality, they first have to enter in by um, way of religion and they would look and if they would look and they would see the Christmas tree and they would see certain things and people like say for instance Israelites would point it out to them be like that's not part of the Bible the brothers would automatically give an ear to the Israelites because they see it in the church and and brothers are showing them that it's not really scripture and that's kind of you know that's kind of problematic that's problematic on one level and I'm on the block with brothers I talk. I deal with a lot of people, Moors, Freemasons. I go Christians that are Freemasons, Moors, mystics, Rosicrucian, European rabbis that follow Kabbalah. I, you know, I deal with a whole bunch of people. So it's dangerous on one level because just having a Christmas tree, Easter egg, per se, I'm just bringing that up right now, in the church is problematic because it's not scripture. I often tell people it's not part of the primitive church. I um I often when you're involved in church and you grow up in church you could be locked into politics and not even know it so politically you can answer a certain question um like politicians do you can answer a certain question instead of giving people straight out answers you'll say things like the Christmas tree is not pagan the Christmas tree is not pagan but the Christmas tree is a symbol and we we say we use symbols so I want to explain some things with symbols and the occult and basically this is what I do but it's real stuff. We have what's known as esoteric knowledge and exoteric knowledge. Most occultists that you see, they believe in esoteric doctrine. That's a secret doctrine. That's a doctrine just for the initiate, initiated. And the exoteric doctrine is for the people in general. So they say when you deal with the church and you deal with different things, that exoteric doctrine just for people the church, the regular people in the church to go to church, jump up and down, sing and clap, but there's a deeper mystical teaching, a Gnostic and uh, esoteric teaching, or mystical Christianity, and so many other things fall underneath this. And we're going to, you know, I'm going to try to explain some of this. Here's a tree. 
Now, people say that the Christmas tree is just a symbol and we have freedom in Christ. That's no problem. But at the same time, um, there are occultists. Like I talk to pastors and they're cool and they're Freemason. They say, we see you going in with the tree, but the tree's not going anywhere. People spend billions of dollars on commercials because, and they want to interject certain things in commercials because they know the subconscious mind is powerful. The occult has always taught this. The mysteries have always taught this. If you go back to other Freemasons, they've always taught this in all esoteric schools of thought, that the subconscious mind is very powerful. Therefore, symbols can relay multiple messages to individuals' brains. They say we only use one part of our brain. So there's a lot of people who say we have a Christmas tree and we just use it and it's symbolic of the evergreen tree in Europe and that was the only tree that didn't die. So it's symbolic of everlasting life. Some, something like, you know, the guy, St. Patrick with the shamrock and teaching on the Trinity and stuff like that. So these are symbols. But the problem is the same symbols that we use, the occult use also in a different fashion. They have a tree. If you Google right now, I'm not going to go through all of my slides, but I picked some out. If you Google right now the tree of life in Kabbalah, you'll see the picture on your right. There is a tree. There's an outward tree, and it's what the tree really symbolically means, esoterically speaking. Symbolically, you can transform yourself, because this is what the occult teach. You can transform yourselves into gods. And when we start getting into the tree, the Bible said that there were, there were trees in the garden. In the occult, they use things symbolically. So as a Pentecostal, I would think automatically that there were two trees and two real people, and the trees were real trees, and they were real fruits. Um, because I look at the scripture in a literal sense. Literal means, well, I'm not going to even get into the whole thing, but how we view it when we're speaking literally. Literal and literally, I'm going to explain that in the class. But oftentimes, the average Christian that you speak to, they look at the tree in the garden, they think it's two trees, they imagine it in their mind, and a man and a woman and a serpent. But they don't do like that in the occult doctrine. In the occult doctrine, they teach that those trees in the garden were people. Elijah Muhammad, anybody that dabbled in the occult teachings, that's how we get the serpent seed doctrine. They said the tree was really, the serpent was really, and the tree were really Europeans. That bad tree were Europeans, and Europeans mixed with another man. And they would join scripture with the original man. I'm sorry, and they would join scripture. This is Mark. And he came to um, Bethesda, and, he, and they bring him a blind man unto him and besought him, and he touched him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his eyes upon him, he asked him what he saw. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. Occultists use this scripture, I see men as trees walking, and connect it with Genesis and the tree in Genesis and say men are trees symbolically. So symbolically, when you see a tree, when you hear about a tree, there's a deeper esoteric meaning, and we are trees. So when you see a Christmas tree, and the tr Christmas tree has lights on it, and there's a star on top of it, that's really the Hindu mystical chakra system. The star on the top is symbolic of your third eye. Remember, the esoteric doctrine can be, I could teach the esoteric doctrine in Little Red Riding Hood. I can teach it with Quran. I can teach it with the 5% lessons. You can teach it with anything if you're a master and you're in the occult. And this is how their message spread. It's the same thing with the Easter egg. They gave us an egg and a bunny, and y'all have it in church, and it's not part of the primitive church. This is just, this, these are just examples that I'm giving y'all. But in the occult, Helen Blavatsky, the mystics in the occult, all secret teachings, they have an egg also, and they have a serpent wrapped around the egg. Our book says, be wise as a serpent. Now, the silly bunny, that's, that, that, that's symbolic of some other stuff. The exoteric, the outside, the silly people, the outside people that don't know what none of this stuff mean, but they just happy with it and everything is all good. Not saying pastors or Christians that have trees in their church are involved in the occult, but they're deeper meanings. And I'm going to be throughout the year, I'm going to be bringing out occult teachings that people have. And they're basically their double meanings. It's real. When we start dealing with the occult, it's so real. I'm going to introduce some of these people. These are who I call um, 
um, priests or prophets of Osiris and the ancient mysteries. Um, this big picture over here, this is Bobby Hammett. Bobby Hammett is a master. I think I can pull Bobby Hammett up on, I have something else right here. I think I can pull Bobby Hammett up on some on something else. I want to show y'all a picture of him. And, and th this is from Cyanetta Television. Hopefully I can do this thing. Hopefully I can do this thing right. Let me see if it says share. This is from Cyanetta TV, but these people are online. What y'all don't know is these people are actually on the internet and they're teaching people and they're teaching, they're teaching the craft or what people would call witchcraft. They're teaching the occult doctrine. Bobby Hammett in this video, Bobby Hammett at Cyanetta Studio. Y'all pull that up. Young Pharaoh, cut it out. Pull this video up right here. I'm just going to show you the video. I don't think I, I'll be able to play it without cutting out that other screen. I'm still learning some of this stuff here. But Bobby Hammett is saying that somebody's giving you problems, all you have to, you know, you got to fix them. Old timers use just like kind of what we call root working. He'd say, take a dark bottle. And he said, oh, open up the bottle. And he said, you got to put the bottle in a dark place. And you put their name inside the bottle and put it up in a closet somewhere and tell them, get up off of you. And the spirits will go to work for you and start doing other things. The same thing with the other gentlemen that we, let me see if I can stop this and um, bring this one down here. The same thing with the other gentleman. This other brother right here, Brother Panic. Brother Panic is Brother Panic is interesting because he don't even want to use the word metaphysics. Brother Panic say straight, listen, I'm an occultist and I'm dealing with the occult. He's dealing with the occult and the secret doctrine. He say, just don't ask those spirits in general for other stuff like just money. Just don't ask them for stuff like that. So he say he commune with the spirits and it's okay. And it's an ancient African doctrine. White man been keeping this from us. Y'all Google these names. This is this is this is Brother Panic right here. The other guys is 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 um Bobby Hammett and the other picture that I'm gonna show you is is Phil Valentine. I'm trying to go back and forth. Hopefully I'm not um hopefully all right. I think I got this part of it. I think I got this part of it down packed. But these are things that we have to we gotta begin to understand. These are some things we got to begin to understand. Phil Valentine, he deal with the esoteric, the occult lore, and the Bible. It's funny because a lot of people don't know these people use the Bible. I constantly hear people in the conscious community, they may bash the Bible, but they're always quoting a scripture or two to support a doctrine from the Bible. I'm giving y'all, I'm giving y'all some stuff right here. Y'all got to take this and y'all got to understand what's going on. Let me see if I go through a couple of these slides. One of the problems is why people say the Bible comes from occult doctrine is because the scripture says that Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. Back in the days in ancient Kemet, if you were learned in the wisdom, that means that you came in and you were initiated into the mysteries. This is what being, is being taught. Jackson, Stolen Legacy, Dr. Ben, almost every master teacher believed that Moses, believed that Jesus, believed that John the Baptist went to Kemet and was initiated into Freemasonry. I'm calling it Freemasonry today to give y'all an understanding Standing, not blaming that on Prince Hall or free, you know, cats inside the Blue Lodge or whatever, but I'm trying to explain some stuff and I'm trying to make a connection. And basically I'm trying to go through the whole class and, and you know, all 200 videos uh, on slides within about six slides. So this is what they think. They think Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and your Bible says so. Acts 7 and 22. Now, does that mean he was a Mason? He was initiated into the occult doctrine and he came out and he taught the occult doctrine to other people. Almost everybody in the conscious community believes in it. And the reason they believe in it is because the conscious community is connected to Luciferianism and the ancient occult teaching from the fallen ones or what other people would call the watchers. This is why the conspiracy is there. And I'm trying to teach y'all. I'm trying to show y'all how y'all can um how, how y'all can kind of have an understanding of it. I'm trying to, I'm trying to do this, like I said, make this video short, but I'm trying to do this to show y'all something. Dr. Ben spoke about it and you, he believes in the connection and black man of the Nile and his family. This year, 20 and 2019, I'm, I'm going to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. When I talk about politics and the Bible, I was full time doing apologetics down in um, in Marietta, down in Georgia. My people had church down there and I was down there and Shaka Utmost made a video and I made a general statement. Um, I made a general statement because somebody told me Shaka Utmost doing a video and he's dealing with Proverbs, Psalms, and they taking their scriptures back. Dr. Ben, in the early 90s, I had this book, 
we the black, black Jews, as well as black men of the Nile and his family. In the book, Dr. Ben brings out certain things. And Dr. Ben says, I'm going to give you one example. Dr. Ben says that there's a connection with Pharaoh, the Pharaoh of Egypt, and one of the Pharaohs of Egypt and Solomon with a couple of verses in Proverbs or whatever. So some people often would say that the Bible is plagiarized because there's some type of evidence or some type of connection. Now, a lot of what the conscious community says is pseudo, but some of the things that they say are not. And to be honest, if I'm to keep it 100 and not answer y'all politically, because back then when I made the video, I just gave a generalized statement. I said, oh, they all talk in the conscious community, they tell them to take their scriptures back, and I didn't really address it. That's how politicians do. That's how pastors often do. We don't address certain things. There are certain connections in the Bible with creation stories. I can't really say connections, but there were other creation stories. Proverbs were shared back in the days. In seminaries across the world, people do have discussed this on a, on, on a higher level. So if your pastor has a master's degree and he'd been to seminary and, and, and he got an MDiv or whatever, he knows that there are certain things in the Bible that are problematic, and this is one of those things. Now, if I'm part of a clique and apologist and, you know, apologist and all of that, I can't really answer it, but I, and that's how come I don't really want to go by the title of an apologist because I feel boxed in. And I've been saying this in multiple videos. Scholars do know that there is a connection with Solomon and a few Proverbs in the Bible. I just want to keep it 100, so I wanted to bring that there up. Charges against the Bible coming from the conscious community. It's been tampered with. It is primarily a comedic doctrine. It has evidence of human origins, and it's oppressive in every sense of the word. These are just a few things I, I put down and I may, um, I may, I don't know if I'm going to touch on it now or I'm going to get on other things. Um, there's a lot of problems that people have with scriptures. I deal with all type of people, fundamentalist Christians. I deal with atheists. I deal with Freemasons, and they all look at the Bible differently. They view scriptures differently. And there are things that are in the Bible that there's two ways to read the scriptures, y'all. I read the scriptures in the Holy Ghost because I'm Pentecostal. So you can be in church because people want to know how can somebody be in church and not know there's contradictions in the Bible? How can you be in church and not know this? And you've been a pastor for seven years. You've been a pastor for 20 years, especially if you're Pentecostal. When you read the Bible, you read the Bible in the Holy Ghost. A spirit is leading you. And if the spirit of truth is leading you and you're reading it, you're going to read nothing but truth. But there were German scholars, there's other scholars, there's people part of the Jesus Seminar movement, there's other people that read the Bible and they read it like a regular piece of literature. This began in the 1800s, late 1800s, early 1900s, and if they read it as a regular piece of literature in their natural state, remember as a Pentecostal, I believe the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, neither can he know them. But if if you read it as a natural person, you'll begin to see certain things. And scholars, not the conscious community, scholars came up with certain problems that they've seen in the text that the average Christian don't know about. Pastors know about it, and they deal with it in seminary. And when they get out of seminary, they, di they, they disseminate, they drop the knowledge or according to how they feel led. Some people say, oh, the pastors are the 10%. They're keeping the knowledge from the people. And this is what Elijah Muhammad and Clarence 13 said. The 5 percenters were the poor righteous teachers that knew everything. The 85 percent are just the regular people in the church, in the pews, in the street. And the 10 percent are those that know it but don't really want to speak on it. Some people feel if you're too young and you come into the faith, when you read certain things and you see certain things, you'll be thrown off. This is why we got a lot of these, quote unquote, ex-pastors running around here because they're finding deeper things out. Me, I feel they should have known certain things before they were even installed, if any of them were installed as elders and pastors and things like that. But we're all growing. Different people are growing. So you have that documentary hypothesis or you got the JEDP theory. And I'm going to show you all some things about this, about this theory, because when we start dealing with this theory, 
storm. They read scripture and they see that there seems to be some contradictions in the scripture. Genesis 1 and 2 is read differently, and that's primarily where they got that theory from, but they continue to add certain things on in different portions of scripture. This is the King James Bible. And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort, um, shalt thou bring into the ark to keep them alive with thee, and they shall be male and female. In one Genesis story, I mean, in one um, flood story, we have God commanding Noah to bring two of everything into the ark of the fowls after their kind and the cattle after their kind of every creeping thing on the earth after his kind two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive then we can go on and and we'll see here this is on the seventh chapter a few verses later that god is speaking to noah come thou and all thy house into the ark for thee i have seen righteousness before thee in that generation of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and females of the beast that are not clean by two. So now we see something different a few verses later. Now we look like the people that wrote this some feel were the priests that came later on because they have an idea of clean and unclean animals. People say this is a straight contradiction. Other people say these are two different groups of priests that wrote it and it, and it was wove together. It once they was wove together, there's evidences. If you read the Bible in the Holy Ghost, it's not going to be a problem. But if you're attempting to study the Bible in the natural sense and treating it like a regular book, you can see evidences of an editor. When I say an editor, what the, I don't know what an editor, you know what an editor does. So this is kind of where the confusion comes in, but people deal with it in seminary. They deal with this on a higher level. You have people in the conscious community that'll bring certain things out, contradictions in the Bible, and these are things that they'll use. Other people will be like, I can't believe I've been a believer all this time, and now my son's coming home with this mess because he's been talking to them other guys, and he's pointing things out to them. They love to say, I'm going to show it to you out of your own book. So he says, on oh, male and female, of the fowls of the air by seven, the male and the female, to keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth for yet seven days. And there's a number of seven in there. Seven animals, seven days, and occultists, occultists take these mystical numbers and they do some other things with them. They're going in another direction with this. So I feel a certain way about the trees, but I want to explain the occult doctrine, and I'm going to do that because they're at work. The occult doctrine is at work in the conscious community, and it's, they're moving on another level. They're coming into contact with beings. They're teaching a doctrine of your higher self and coming, to, coming into contact with these beings. They're actually telling and giving you spells. This is nothing new. I think I remember back in the days, the right on magazine. I think the Write On magazine back in the days had some things about astrology and, and you know, the telling the girls if they broke up with you, how to make him love you. These were little magic potions. Back in the days, we had books. We had dream books. And these books had to do with numbers. That lady said, I feel a, I feel a 27 in the Belita. The other girl, she had a 255. That was her pet number. I dreamt the house. That house means 17.9. And they just and, and because dreams and how you can contact beings or spirits and how they can guide you to hit the number. And we're just seeing more and more of this. So this is the direction I'm going to be taking. I wanted to go through a couple of slides. I know I ran through a lot of stuff, but like I said, it's 200 and something slides. It's a lot of information and so many different people are hitting me on different levels. It's just funny how the, you know, the Masonic pastors and stuff, and they are pastors that are Freemasons, or if they're not pastors, they're all Freemasons. They're connected with fraternities or groups and other things, and they have trained people claim to think on another level so but that's about it if you like what you heard um subscribe and i'm gonna see if i can load this thing up thanks for watching